announcement on on the on the web center or because Um, the thing we see that has been uh, published in 2015 was um, issue, uh, after a rich, a rich and long democratic process uh, that was the roots of the Energy Transition Act. Um, there was a, a, what we call friends, the um, um, public dialogue on, on the Project of energy transition, so it was really uh, focused uh, focusing more on, on energy transition than low carbon as such. In 2012 and 2013, um, that was meant to be a, a debate with stakeholders as well as civil society. After long uh, and rich debate, um, there was an act uh, published in in that that include uh, uh, an article about the, the necessity of elaborating a long-term um, strategy uh, uh, and to update this strategy uh, regularly. To, uh, to do this uh, long-term strategy, um, the, the steel committee uh, was set up with a repression of ministries, businesses, and schools, uh, Training, uh, and as well as uh, same meetings also with the uh, different stakeholders into uh, pilots and steer the, um, the process of iteration of the um, and, uh, and in terms of public and large public consultation, um, it has been uh, the public has been consulted uh, after the elaboration of the, of the strategy uh, on a web platform. To give uh, their comments and, and, and of modification of the of the strategy, uh, uh, of the so the the, 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 whole, the the whole process of the version of the strategy was really uh, uh, by different uh, different involved public um, public at, at the level of the of the, of the general public as well. As, as precise of, of stakeholders. Uh, coming to this uh, long term SMB, the features of this uh, SMBC. So it has, as I mentioned, a legal uh, status as it is uh, 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 obligation of the uh, Energy Transition Act. Uh, so it's its legal status. Uh, it has also a long term objective. Um, with what we call in France the factor cat, the uh, factor uh, four, meaning that uh, we have the, the former objective bef before the, the climate plan of this year. I will, I will mention later, but the objective was to uh, divide the, our uh, greenhouse gas emission by four in 2050 compared to uh, 1990. Um, so a long-term objective was, was there. Um, it includes policy recommendations, uh, both at the sectoral level, so we, we have divided uh, the, the strategy with, with the classical uh, sectors uh, as in such as trees, uh, energy, transportation, agriculture, um, and, and um, residential, and, and, and so on. Uh, and it has also a uh, cross-cutting uh, recommendations such as carbon price, um, territorial implementation, research and development, um, all, all these kind of, of cross, cross important cross-cutting issues. In terms of implementation, it, it has the strategy, which is uh, 
uh, three carbon beds to cover uh, three periods, so 2015, 2018, 2019, 2023, 2024, and 2028. Um, and next, uh, the result is that the next strategy will add a new budget uh, for the period after 2029. Um, idea is also that to these budgets uh, consistent with the, the political uh, calendar. So it, it, it's, it's the budget is set up to 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 uh, a presidential election that one in a way one government is responsible for the for its uh, carbon budget. <laughs> um, so the that's an idea. Um, we have set a, a, a list of indicators. I think it's uh, more than 20 indicators that are of different nature. We have indicators, uh, uh, indicators for the, 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 the of impact of greenhouse gas of, of and greenhouse gas uh, total greenhouse gas emissions. Also, uh, and added to that, to that, we have uh, several indicators uh, that capture the, the progress of the different sectoral recommendations of the of the um, uh, strategy to you know, monitor the the, the, the progress and the, 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 of the of the strategy. Uh, each period, we will have an assessment of the results by an independent uh, expert committee. Where the indicators are, are meant to be published uh, each year and based on, on the ministry uh, collection of data. But at the end of, the, of each period, we have a more uh, independent experts uh, committee review in order to give the uh, opinion on, on the progress of the, of the strategy. And um, maybe the next slide. Uh, also have in 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 the um, first CDC uh, uh, a macroeconomic impact uh, assessment, which um, done after the elaboration of the of the trajectory in a way, in a way uh, to to assess uh, whether we are in a good. Uh, uh, or acceptable rate of of impact on the GDP or impact on job creation, which was really important to convince the stakeholders, other ministries, uh, um, and even the, the political level of of the reality and the, the, of of the act of the possible possible uh, acceptance of, of of the whole strategy. Um, in terms of results, uh, we uh, found these uh, assessments concluded that the impact on GDP will be uh, of one uh, positive one percent per year uh, on average uh, over the, the 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 whole period of of, of the SNDC, and there will be job creation between one hundred thousand and and three and fifty uh, hundred thousand. Over the over the, the period, of course, uh, it's an average numbers, and as the strategy, um, a lot of investment at the beginning of the period. Uh, you first uh, spend a lot of money and 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 make a lot of investment, and and they have a, a positive retroactive impact on 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 the job creation uh, afterwards. When on in terms of the second uh, um, second strategy, so we are just now uh, preparing the second exercise, the date of this uh, of the strategy. Um, what I wanted to to say about this new strategy is that many process of election is the same. Of course, it won't be the big uh, national debate as. as was in, in 2011 2013 because it was really something specific. We will have um, uh, the uh, steering by the stakeholders with a steering committee that includes all the stakeholders. You have. Uh, <laughs> 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 
participation from the public. And is, what is new in this uh, new in the is this in second exercise is that the the, the uh, there has been this uh, climate plan uh, announced by our minister uh, in in July, and and the new strategy will include the objective of carbon neutrality by 2050, which means that we will extend uh, the the term of the of the strategy instead of being. Uh, until 2035 or 2040, we will go until 2050. The other thing is that carbon neutrality is, of course, an objective uh, more ambitious than the former um, uh, factor four, and for that reason, it will also uh, have a greater impact in terms of of, of the uh, measures we will uh, uh, undertake. Other new uh, features in, in this uh, second exercise is that we, we will to articulate more uh, with the adaptation plan and that uh, there will we will have an adaptation plan that is going to be out in, in, in the coming weeks and, and so we, it's a quite a challenge to add, to uh, be consistent in terms of mitigation and adaptation and, and so it will uh, be included in this new uh, second uh, exercise. And it all done uh, with jointly with uh, revision of our five-year energy plan, uh, uh, and and that's so try to be as consistent as possible in terms of of, of energy and and energy planning exercises and in and climate uh, planning exercises. In terms of recommendation. Uh, so still an ongoing process. I think these all these uh, exercises of long-term uh, perspective are quite new in, in everywhere, and, and so even if it's a second uh, exercise in France, we are still learning, and, and we are really learning by doing. Um, what I wanted to say is that first uh, modeling work. Uh, May appear a bit uh, technical or 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 disintegrated or not not, not much uh, uh, so complete, but it's really important to uh, bridge the reality gap and to to, to uh, prove in a way to to support the the the, the saying that there is a really need to of transformation. Of, of of the sectors and transformation of, of also of behavior etc. If you don't have this modeling work, you you don't manage to convince the transportation people that um, that the transportation is actually uh, really emitting uh, CO2, or you don't you don't manage to convince that there is there is a big need of of, of uh, um, changing uh, the the term of the of the industries or et cetera, et cetera. So that's really, uh, from our point of view, really important. That the impact assessment in terms of growth, economic impact on the economy in general, but more specific jobs, inequalities, the investment financing uh, is important. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the way the strategy is. Uh, on by government or is endorsed at, at the political level or uh, is endorsed also by the um, by the, the stakeholders or the, the or even the civil society the the, the, the and, and given the state of our economies in 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 in, in, in France and in Europe it, the, the, the all big uh, of the of the entire economy and and the the big uh, um, the big item on, on, on the economy is really key. Uh, what we'd like to, to improve if we have enough time and enough resources is also the in, in the current strategy, the in investment and financing is, is so well uh, treated and, and it's really a, an area for improvement for, for, for us uh, because if 
if there is financing and, and if pricing doesn't go to low carbon economy at the end, uh, I mean, the directive is, is not really, uh, there, results are not there. And, uh, of course, the stakeholders' involvement is, is key. Um, uh, it, it provides full, uh, in, useful inputs for, for the model work, for, for the, 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 the construing of the recommendation. But it also ensures the full buying of the, of the strategy. If you don't make any stakeholders' involvement, you don't make uh, uh, your strategy uh, uh, read and and, and endorsed by, by different stakeholders. And it's quite uh, time consuming. It's, 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 it's difficult as well because because stakeholders, uh, of course, uh, I mean, it's a whole uh, uh, formation of, of, of different uh, way of doing business, of transformation of sectors. So it's really difficult to, to, to convince uh, uh, at some point, but, but you don't at the end, it's, it's, you can get the strategy at, at all on the first. So, uh, presentation for today, um, and I'm happy to answer some of the questions. Thank you much, Bill. That was uh, really interesting. Great to hear your recommendations, particularly on stakeholder engagement and an interesting point about aligning with political cycles there. Um, I'd like to now pass to Adam White, Senior Advisor, uh, sorry, Senior Research Coordinator uh, here at WWF European Policy. Adam, if you tell us a little bit more about the guidance that the Maximizer Project has released um, and anything to build on what Ophelia has said in regards to recommendations. Thanks, thanks for the chance to uh, talk through a bit uh, this guidance report. I'll try to keep it brief uh, so that there's enough time for questions afterwards. Uh, this is the second report that the Maximizer Project has produced. The first report was an assessment of the existing EU uh, long-term decarbonisation strategies. Uh, and actually, France was the best scoring country in that uh, assessment with a 78% score. So a lot of what I, uh, will be will have been already mentioned by uh, the previous presenter. Um, so there are 10 essential elements that we identified through literature review uh, and also through the guidance that we, uh, through the assessment that we made of the strategies. Uh, let's just change, change the slide. And those essential elements are ambition, uh, the scope of the um, strategy, whether it's actionable, whether it's integrated, whether it has a political commitment behind it. Uh, the extent to which monitored and reported upon the public transparency of the uh, strategy and its underlying data, the degree of stakeholder participation, uh, its ethical basis, and then its uh, its review cycles. So I'll go through each of these uh, in a bit more detail. On ambition, uh, we felt strongly that uh, EU low carbon development strategies should uh, reflect the Paris Agreement and the increase in, in ambition that that agreement uh, represents. These should be tracked into national emissions reductions targets, uh, but not just endpoint targets for 2050. There should be either a, a series of carbon budgets or interim targets to ensure that the total volume of emissions uh, is kept as low as possible. Uh, and the strategy should also have a ratchet and review mechanism so that they uh, can be updated, the, the ambition can be updated as needed or as, is, as becomes possible. Regarding scope, they cover all sectors and all emissions, and this should include uh, sink emissions and land use, and land use change and forestry emissions. Uh, we quite challenging, and so certainly for EU countries, we felt that this should be supported uh, by the, by the EU modelling processes uh, that are done in Brussels, and by a better resource member states who have who've had the experience of this uh, of some of the other member states. This should acknowledge those most those sectors that are most challenging to decarbonise um, and directly address those challenges head on, rather than pushing them back uh, 
uh, during the process. Um, and as much as possible, the these mitigation strategies should include links to adaptation strategies that already exist at national level or should already exist. So uh, it should also be actionable. This is the third, and that should include a thorough description of actions and measures. There should be timelines and updates on, on implementation. Um, the the long-term 2050 strategies or, or 30 or 40 year strategies should be supported by shorter term plans, so decadal plans or maybe even five year plans. They should be linked to financing, including national fiscal measures for, for ensuring implementation. Uh, and they address any barriers to implementation. Sure. I will try to. Um, so the fourth point is that these plans should be integrated. And for us, that, that meant uh, particularly in the EU context that uh, national uh, low carbon emissions, low carbon development strategies uh, should take into account the targets, policies, and measures of their neighboring countries. Uh, this is particularly important in the EU, for example, because uh, of the proportion of emissions that come from the energy sector and the power sector in particular, the degree of integration in European power networks. So making sure there is a degree of coherence between member states is important in that regard. Um, and there should be consultation on a given national strategy with uh, governments and non-governmental stakeholders to ensure as much coherence as possible. And um, we can learn a bit, we can uh, in mind when we look, look at the, the European Commission's proposal on national energy and climate plans to 2030, which, which reflect this somewhat. As regards political commitment, this is obviously something mentioned uh, in the previous presentation. We felt that these strategies need a clear commitment and leadership from the start, and which is maintained throughout the process, uh, ideally in a, uh, across all political parties. Um, should be, they should be part of a broader development strategy because this can help increase the political commitment of it if they're not purely seen as decarbonisation strategies but broad uh, development strategies. Uh, then you can also highlight the benefits, for example, the job numbers that were given. Um, they should be part of a robust legal framework with a, a strong technical underpinning so they aren't kind of undone uh, by, by a uh, less supportive process on. Mon uh, they, all of these strategies have a clear monitoring, reporting, and verification framework. And that should have a positive feedback loop so that uh, any problems in implementation are flapped early and and uh, improved are included into an iterative process of, of maintaining these strategies as live documents. Um, as much as possible, the monitoring should be done by independent agencies to remove any bias. Uh, and they should, to any reporting fatigue, uh, the, the items that are reported on in the strategy should be part of uh, existing reporting arrangements. Uh, it's also important that that reporting is uh, communicated publicly as much as possible to, to maintain transparency. And it is indeed the next point. This is the seventh point on now. Uh, factors uh, that inform the low carbon development strategy should be fully publicly available. And that doesn't just mean the plans and the policies uh, and the and measures, also the underlying data should be available so that uh, and also less informed members of the public can understand uh, the un the underlying basis for the strategy and can and see the logic within it. Uh, and it should be remembered that the main data available doesn't make it transparent. Uh, it needs to be fully understood so there can be degrees of detail within within that transparency. Uh, I felt that, that these strategies should have a, a specific section on how they will be communicated to the public. So the last two or three, uh, public transparency felt there needed to be a clear um, process of uh, process transparency. This is the, the section on stakeholder participation. 
uh, it needs to go beyond consultation and, and reflect a bit the, the French process that we heard about earlier and should be fully participative with the sense of their ownership in the development of the strategy. Um, we also have important that national governments don't just assume the participation of other levels of government, be regional or, or municipal, uh, because they can often be left behind, and that, 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 that would be a significant problem given how many of the emissions are, for example, produced by transport, which are generally managed uh, by cities or towns. Uh, also, hard to reach groups should be drawn into the process. Um, so, the basis should uh, build on existing data as much as possible. Uh, it should be processed using a suite of models and sensitivity analysis to ensure as robust as possible results rather than relying on single uh, modeling suites that, that may overlearn the elements or may be less strong in certain, certain parts of analysis. And the, the modeling shouldn't only be data driven, but it should also uh, include risk analyses of elements such as the political economy questions that could, could come up over the lifetime of the strategy, which, which could easily be 30 or 40 years. Um, as well as looking at the cost of implementing the strategy, it's important to also highlight uh, the benefits. This is something we've uh, found particularly challenging at EU level, which, which tends to focus more on costs than benefits. As without looking at the benefits, you, you don't get a clear idea of the best value decarbonization uh, rather than just the least cost. Uh, and the last section is on reviewing the strategies. So it would be a regular review cycle, we felt, of at least every five years. But as well as a, a timed review, there should also be the potential for a triggered review such as uh, if a further increase in global ambition was agreed uh, in the coming years, and that should uh, to review of national strategies so that ambition can be uh, replicated there. Um, review should also learn lessons from implementation to take into account new scientific or technological developments and uh, the evolving socioeconomic situation of the country. Um, that should be a dynamic process that's enshrined in law so that the reviews are, are guaranteed to happen. That's all from me. That was clear and I'm happy to answer any questions in uh, the next section. Thank you. Thank you much, Adam. Uh, very interesting to hear more about uh, um, regular process, so something that you and just really touched on. So to ask Marianne Carlson, Senior Advisor at the Norwegian Ministry for Climate and Environment, Department for Climate Change. Uh, Marianne, if you could also uh, give us any of your thoughts on regular stock take and review and um, how important you think stakeholder engagement is in the implementation of long-term plans. can't hear you, so you may be on mute. Um, if you are, please unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for the opportunity to share some thoughts on, on the links between the LEDs and, and the global stock take, and uh, as well as, as uh, non state stakeholders' involvement. First of all, um, I think uh, this and the other um, dialogues that I've been listening into on long-term strategies shows uh, how they are uh, coming to life in different shapes and formats according to uh, country uh, circumstances and how they align to national uh, planning processes. Uh, very interesting to listening to, to the um, uh, case of the to a planning horizon uh, combined with uh, a budget, a carbon budget approach. Um, in Norway, we have just uh, launched the national 2030 strategy, which is uh, an implementation strategy for our NDC. Uh, and we will, uh, by 2020, also um, submit our long-term long uh, long strategy for us, the, the, the LEDs and the role of the LEDs is very important to consider when we are thinking about this in, in a global stocktake context. 
Uh, it is important that the uh, the lead is home our end. Uh, they do provide an opportunity to create planning horizons, both for pub public and pl uh, private investment. Uh, we do uh, believe they provide an opportunity to show and illustrate and, and communicate uh, transformation pathways. In Norway, uh, this is a very key, key to. Um, I think what we do in the global stock take is to take stock of, of, uh, of where we are uh, with regard to achieving our, our, um, our targets that we have set for uh, the Paris Agreement. And I think our indices is, is key. But first of all, of course, the, the, the scientific uh, benchmark that ICT set. But it's important that we, um, we hold um, a, a firm link to indices. This is where we do have our obligations uh, to report, uh, and which is also up for review. Uh, collective um, the aggregation of the indices is already decided to be one of the bases for uh, the global stock take. That is not to say that uh, that the LDCs cannot play uh, a role in the, in the global stock take. I think it's important to as a part of the dialogue on how we ramp up uh, ambition, uh, how we are planning uh, for uh, enhanced action over time uh, in accordance with, with, with what we have agreed uh, uh, under Article 4. So, so I think it's, it's, um, it's absolutely um, a link with the uh, lens and the global stock sale. However, the, the, the um, the formal link between uh, parties' actions and the uh, global stock take is anchored in the Paris Agreement, and it's, it's fair. It's going to inform uh, indices. It says that in, in Article 14, and also says in Article 4 that the indices uh, that we submit every five years shall be informed by the the, the global stock take. There is no such formal link uh, on on the lead. And all reporting requirements on it, and they are also voluntarily. So, I think linking it up to the formal global stock take process has to be uh, throughout the dialogue on how long term perspectives uh, do inform uh, our work uh, on, on indices and our aims and efforts to, to enhance action. Uh, to the, the second issue uh, on, on global on, on, on stakeholder involvement, it's absolutely imperative. I think it's all climate policies, all policies need to be supported uh, by a broad involvement of those who's actually going to, to do the job. Um, in a way, we have had a process around creating. Um, a, global, a green a strategy for green competitiveness, which is actually how Norway um, grab the opportunities that uh, green transformation actually um, actually represent. I think for Norway, uh, which uh, many of you may know, has a, a economy closely linked to um, petroleum sector, and we have a deep transformation we have to go through. Uh, with the aim of becoming a low emission society. In the process, uh, we will need to create uh, jobs in other sectors. We need to, to harvest the competence that uh, have gained already through uh, many years of, of uh, high technology, um, energy uh, uh, work in the energy sector. And this strategy um, was based on roadmaps that businesses and um, also uh, labor organizations actually work together to see how they can create roadmaps for mission uh, society within their sector. And that basis uh, that a mission um, and their, their uh, recommendations to the government uh, for um, in the year. And this year, just one ago, the strategy from the government so this was a very, I think, was one of the biggest thing about this 
um, green competitive uh, strategy towards uh, 2050 was actually uh, the process itself. Actually had a very strong stakeholder ownership, ownership of a planning horizon that is long term is, is key to stakeholder buying. It's also uh, key for for those who's going to job a need uh, that long time uh, planning horizon for the process industries have long uh, technology development perspective. We do need this long-term vision, uh, that, that long-term narrative to, to, uh, to, gain, um, to gain support for, for those investments necessary, which very often have short-term costs, but return uh, high returns. So that's um, to, to, uh, to, to your questions. much, Marianne. Um, much appreciated for your, your thoughts there. Uh, finally, I'll turn to Kakabo Dvani, Chief Specialist of Climate Change Division Integrated Management Department in Georgia. Um, could I please ask you to briefly just give us some thoughts on Georgia's long-term planning process and uh, your thoughts on the, Marianne mentioned, the connection between the global stock take uh, and the Paris Agreement. I hope you hear well. Thank you for giving the floor uh, and uh, a very well, warm uh, greeting from the from Georgia. Uh, and, uh, I would like to share with you this, uh, his thoughts uh, and uh, work we we are doing regarding the long term strategy, which is really um, com uh, complicated work for the developing developing party. So next uh, few minutes, I will talk about the objectives, what kind of objectives our strategy uh, has, which is based on the, our RDC presented in 2015. Also, I'll talk about the key challenges, what, we, what we're facing right now to develop uh, this kind of approach for 20, 2015. And also, I'll uh, give you a few uh, key challenges, uh, so the key success uh, notes uh, that would be and the very, uh, significant one, but very uh, fundamental to build a, a really uh, workable uh, workable strategy. And lastly, I would uh, like to address the monitoring and uh, review uh, perspectives, uh, which is uh, pretty important for the for the countries like the developing one. So uh, to stop the objectives, uh, I'd like to emphasize that we, uh, as an uh, association process with the European Union, we, we uh, follow the direction to keep the ambitious level as high as possible. In terms of mitigation, it means two to main objectives. First one is to limit carbon emissions, um, and second one to increase the carbon stock. Uh, by uh, keeping the, our forest uh, sector as a carbon sink, a sink uh, carbon sinker. So, uh, also for us, the most important uh, thing is about the uh, adaptation part and reduce the vulnerability of our sensitive group of group of community. I think we think that it's most important to have a driven process in the climate field as a capacity development for the key stakeholders we have in the process. So uh, key challenges uh, for the development of the strategy is uh, start from the um, from where we have and uh, working in climate, uh, climate strategies and the first one is about the uh, low ocean development strategy which we finalized just now as a, a draft version and for, the, for this uh, in the country we had a, a, a several key stakeholders involved in the process so, uh, so uh, it was uh, really a comprehensive work in terms of they to to communicate the different uh, different partners uh, in terms of the climate uh, climate change and how can uh, join the 
financial and social perspectives which country has right now. So the so the um, the key challenges with the fluctuation in economy which we have uh, time to time, and also the social effects, uh, social factors which uh, which is one of the uh, key. Uh, priority for the government to address this, ch uh, this kind of challenges. So this goes uh, mostly for climate, if, if we translate into a climate uh, field, it is mostly goes with the adaptation part. So how can we reduce the, uh, how can we reduce the, uh, limitate the, um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, Effects we will receive from the extreme climate events. Uh, also, uh, there is a uh, there is not the important thing to have a key stakeholders involved in the process and uh, pursue that to take the climate climate topic uh, aligned with their key strategies. One of the success story of it is about the national energy efficiency plan, which is which was driven by the Ministry of Energy, and the Ministry of Energy took uh, to account all climate uh, mitigation uh, possibilities that can be um, implemented under the under the ministry. So that, uh, the another another key success point is about the interministerial platform. As I told you, that we had this low emission development strategy in approximately five years long process. But, uh, and it, it was based on coordination committee which uh, which considered all key line holders in the country and there was a public uh, discussion and uh, considerations of several key priority issues which we have in, in the country. Um, very transparently. So, the, uh, and uh, the third one of the key uh, key success points is about the vertical integration process. So, this one is related to the uh, mostly our cities and local local governments who had uh, provided the willingness to uh, to join the um, voluntary the climb the mitigation mitigation portfolio. Uh, and they they uh, became uh, uh, signatories of the Covenant of Mayors, and under this they took the responsibility to uh, to limit their emissions to about 20% uh, deviation from business as usual by 2020. So uh, our key, uh, if we if we sum up the key uh, success stories, what we have currently, we uh, try to have in in future. Uh, the strategy that aligns not only central government priorities and key uh, messages and topics there, but also what is it, what is the main issues at the local level. So what are the key uh, problems and sort of barriers they have uh, in terms of the uh, addressing the mitigation, either mitigation or uh, adaptation processes there. So, because the because the central government considers the all all mitigation actions at at last goes with this uh, um, our unity and the local local society means that we have to uh, reflect in our strategy what are their uh, key concerns and how can we uh, more effectively address this. So, this is something that address of our. Fourth goal as well for the capacity development in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the to make make the climate change understandable for the for the uh, for the uh, key stakeholders in the country. Uh, regarding the monitoring and review uh, process, this is something uh, that is uh, offered uh, under the Paris Agreement with the enhanced transparency framework for, for Georgia. So uh, in this regard, currently we have some kind of uh, uh, tabs. As you already know, the non annex one parties are obliged to represent national communications and buy an update, biennial update report with the national GHG inventory. 
That is a very, very first step. This is not something that fits, uh, fits the enhanced transparency framework. The transparency framework needs to be more uh, accurate and also the uh, most uh, to, to cover all, all important aspects. In this regard, in Georgia uh, tries to utilize the uh, several several issues in this. So the first one is to strengthen the uh, municipal development coordination platform in terms of the addressing the uh, local litigation potential. So that at the local level. To fulfill the uh, national national goal, we have a 15% deviation from the business as usual by 2030. Uh, another important aspect which we need to strengthen this is an improvement of national greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, this includes the motives uh, and procedures for implementation of quality issues and quality control procedures in the country. So, methodologies for assigning and reporting mitigation actions, policies, their effects and supports needed, received and provided in order to align the investments which we receive in the country, which is uh, which has the mitigation um, effect or the mitigation one. So, uh, the another another uh, field which we what we want to cover under the Transparency framework is about the um, addressing the private sector as well. So, what kind of mitigation activities are taken in uh, there, and how successfully it is implemented, and what is the contribution for the uh, national targets in terms of the mitigation. And uh, finally, for the uh, monitoring and review provisions. Is about the uh, implemented subnational monitoring system that that goes to the review of the um, work done at the local level in terms of the um, in terms of the uh, uh, sustainable energy action plans, which is currently developed by the uh, several uh, several cities and municipalities in the country. So uh, to sum up. Uh, the uh, which I uh, this is a idea for the for Georgia to have a line not only central government ideas but also the local entities in order to re achieve the um, mitigation the limitation of carbon emissions in the country in order to fulfill the our NDC goals which we currently have and also we. Uh, totally, uh, uh, the country totally thinks that we have to prepare for uh, carbon subtake process in terms of the lot of things still need to be identified. And thank you very much for for the time you gave us uh, to to hear the certain challenges we have in Georgia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, had a lot of really interesting contribution from our panelists today, but we are quite over time, so we're going to extend the length of the webinar slightly, so please hang around if you can, and we'll try and get through as many of your questions as possible. Uh, we've got some questions for some of our panelists specifically, and then there are uh, some themes of questions which I'd like to open up to, to all of our panelists to um, to click on. So a couple of questions for Ophili, um specifically. Will the will the goal be for all greenhouse gas emissions, or just for carbon emissions from energy? And what do you expect regarding nuclear power? That's a specific question from Gunnar Boy Olsen. Um, just a couple of questions, and there was a specific question for you as well. If we can just scroll back to the top display. Um, Maximize the ten the the ten criteria from maximize be quantified into an index in some way, and will that help with kind of review cycles? And then we have quite a few questions regarding the economic impact and finance. So a question for all of our panelists. 
list. Uh, how do we ensure that X impacts are positive? And what role will financing play in this? So, Ophelia, if I could just pass to you first to have a go. Thank you. Yeah, please. Um, uh, the goal um, in terms of uh, zero emissions is, is uh, it's for the whole type of, of GHG uh, emissions, not only carbon. So it's, it's all uh, greenhouse gas in, uh, emissions. Uh, regarding the nuclear, nuclear, uh, what I have to say that the, the um, Energy Transition Act uh, sets uh, objective all in terms of share of uh, nuclear power in the energy mix by 2025, and so share of renewable energy and 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 reduction and energy efficiency, um, and. In terms of nuclear power, the the, the low carbon strategy uh, that has the, issue, the specific issue of nuclear power as such. The, this question is tweeted in in the um, in the planning um, that's done jointly, but still it's an, another document uh, specifically addressing the issue of of the energy mix and energy planning. Uh, in terms of CO2 emission, um, in, in a way, we consider from the low carbon strategy point of view that um, the, that really is, is is low carbon energy in terms of emissions, and 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 we uh, take over the question to the to the energy planning uh, document. Thank you. 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 Thank very much. Uh, these are questions from from Dwi Chow and Shankar Sharma. Uh, so there was the the research was used to uh, evaluate the existing EU low carbon development strategies, and there is a report on the, on the uh, miser.eu website in the publication section. So you can see the methodology for how each of the plans were assessed. Uh, the the ten guidance points I grew out of that assessment, um, as well as additional literature review. Uh, in terms of uh, the, fi the questions where the finance, uh, how that's weighted as such within the assessment or within the evidence, uh, we tried not to say that one point was more important than the other. Um, and it, we felt essential that there was kind of a broad range of, uh, of elements taken into account, which is why we have the, the 10 different points. We felt that, we, that any one of them was deficient that that could undermine the strategy as a whole. Thank you, Adam. We have a couple of uh, specific questions <coughs> and Kakaberry as well. Uh, excuse me, Dan. Um, the question specifically on stakeholder engagement and how we can uh, ensure that this is long term. Uh, do we? How might this work in practice? The um, ensuring, sorry, reprocess and how stakeholder engagement can work long term. And then, Catterbury, a question for you specifically is uh, as as a what got been useful for you, or what guidance did you receive from the UNFCCC when you were developing your your um, long term strategy? Well, and thank you for the for the question. Um, from from my thoughts, um, went to how how we do involve people in the uh, official government processes is that we have regulations for that already. We have hearings, uh, we have open consultative meetings. Uh, when new policies are are settled, there's a law. It has to be on public hearing. Um, there are rules and regulations in Norway for, for stakeholder engagement on any policies, also policies, and that is uh, something that we have had for, for many years. And, and um, as an open democratic society, we will continue to, to apply these tools uh, for climate policies. I think um, what we with, what we also do is that we do create arenas, for example, to follow up the process industry roadmap. And arena has been um, 
been um, uh, created called the uh, Process 21, uh, which is to uh, to have an um, arena where uh, governments, um, the industries, um, labor uh, unions over time can meet and plan and to, to settle how to, to implement the, the uh, targets that they have set for themselves of becoming a zero emission industry by 2050. Uh, so, so I don't know if that's, I, I think that it's important to institutionalize how to go about uh, stakeholder involvement. So it's not a one-off uh, thing that is actually anchored to the way we develop and monitor policies and how do we how we refine them because I think that's really important that um, we 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 do this as a one-off it has to be revised it has to be assessed uh, and for example now um, Norway has established uh, I talked about previously the, the green competitiveness issue that we have been assessing and now has the strategy developed, developed uh, to to to, um, to address. We are, have just recently um, set a uh, commission for assessing climate risk for Norway. Climate risk is both the impacts on climate policies uh, and, for, for example, falling prices of oil and also demand. We, uh, and also the impact of changing climate. So it looks at risk corrective um, so, so, so it's not only the the issue of opportunities but actually we are now looking at the risk for the Norwegian economy due to, to climate as well and these things really need to be anchored um, and, and, and in, in a stakeholder uh, environment uh, otherwise uh, it won't have any impact it won't be relevant um, so so uh, I'm using the using the regular um, system that and, and facilitating that so it's adapted to each and every uh, policies and and, and that's, that's key. And Kakabari, uh, just the point, the question about the UNFCCC guidance when you were developing your long-term plan strategy. So much for the question. I would call the uh, not the guidance, but or but something. Like drive and uh, the uh, stage case for a you know, long term strategy. So, this was uh, the news about um, by the uh, mid during the negotiations, which followed us to the direction that to, to develop some kind of uh, um, contrib contributory documents. And stage case was something like uh, our own commitment to have to present a, an INDC which is the uh, the fundamental basis of the long long term strategy. Also had a uh, partner partner countries and they uh, particularly this uh, low emission development strategy which we started uh, now as the United States uh, uh, so that was the guidance and support or technique were received under the USA. So it's something something like the, how how we consider the support from the uh, so the Uni Triple C mostly works for us so to make it some kind of travel, to make it the process driven and also the state uh, to uh, identify which way it's better to go. We had a we had a general question from Lucas Prince uh, from GIZ about when countries uh, sorry and uh, can you scroll up a little bit for me sorry from Julian Berry in Brussels Environment uh, when update of the low carbon development strategy assessments might be available uh, reported on in March 27 if I could uh, ask our three countries to to answer that question please. So maybe I'll start from from maximize the project perspective. We are currently evaluating the submissions that member states made for 2017, and we're also casting the net slightly wider uh, beyond what was submitted under the current legislation to look uh, and all member states if they have what what should be considered a long-term development strategy, even if it's not called that. 
I'll be publishing that before the end of the year. French uh, side, I, I'm not sure I, I got the position on, on the French side, the schedule is to publish the indicators of uh, the first uh, range of the indicators before the end of, of the year, uh, 2017, and the next, um, the new SNBC is scheduled, uh, the energy plan is scheduled for the end of next year, 2018. Ariana Tuckberry, did you have any comments on, on this question about updated assessments? Uh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure either if I really captured the question well. Um, we, we, um, we just established a climate change act in our way. It was established June this year. That act is a, a cycle. Uh, that uh, synchronizes the normal or the domestic process of reviewing and reviewing targets, our climate targets, 2030 and 2050, every five years starting from 2020. This anchored in law, in the Norwegian law, which means uh, that we are now synchronizing our cycle to the Paris Agreement's five-year ambition cycle. Uh, so so in, in, in that respect, we will uh, then do a first assessment uh, up to 2020 when we, in accordance with the Paris Agreement, are uh, to submit um, um, which is uh, part of the, the, the climate, uh, the, the Paris decision. Um, so, so that's why we are are synchronizing our our our, uh, our climate targets, and there is also uh, anchor a, a a reporting uh, cycle, a reporting cycle on how we are progressing towards our targets to the Parliament every year. Regarding the updates, I'd like to tell you that uh, we have a window opportunity from by the decisions of the triple C, the triple C, that the country has an uh, opportunity to represent the uh, renewed NDC before uh, started an enterprise. So before, so the country has made the decision to revisit its uh, NDC and reconsider it uh, and submit a new one, which. Which is told in my presentation that uh, our approach was to have uh, deviation from business as usual, and the change would go uh, to move uh, the, uh, how the uh, our partners see the process. So to select the uh, baseline year, so base year, uh, and uh, do a very very concrete limitation target on this. So that that would be very uh, significant discussion under this uh, to follow this direction as the European Union uh, follows it. Uh, and uh, the second point would be our 2050 uh, low emission development strategy, which would, 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 would will be um, up to the of 2040 target as well. Thank you. I suppose one, uh, one final question to all of our panelists if everyone could uh, have final comments as, as they wish. So um, on the global stock tape and strategy, uh, does anyone have any suggestions or thoughts or comments, recommendations on how this might work in practice, looking at the two? And finally, uh, what is the role of capacity building on the international level? And how will capacity building uh, for developing countries Linked to the global stock take and long term strategies process. Um, okay, if I could throw to you first for your thoughts on that question, please. Well, um, good is on, on how the global stock take should uh, take place is, is <laughs> quite a challenging question. Uh, maybe what I, I can say is that um, for 
the, the elaboration and the discussions around the long-term strategy is a really good way of, of, of raising, raising uh, ambition, discussing uh, long-term long -term ambition, because as it, as it is long-term, it's easy to discuss with uh, people, with dealers, with countries uh, of, of ambitious targets uh, at this term, because because it's 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 a longer uh, time frame and and people feel uh, constrained by their day to day business the the, the need to do, to to defend uh, their business their jobs and and etc. So for sure um, having the long term uh, the strategy discussing countries uh, is a good uh, thing to 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 raise ambition and then to to maybe uh, inform the global stock take uh, uh, process and 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 the linking with the capacity building is that it, as it is difficult um, um, streaming changing in terms of modernization and and modernization of economic modernization as well as as technical um, uh, for sure there there is there are room of for capacity building in this in this uh, Area. If I may, may add to that, um, for stock take, I think it's, it's, it's imperative that we do not use the, um, the long term strategies, which is important, but it's not our commitment under the Paris Agreement. They are voluntarily, and they are, there is no follow up. Uh, formally anchored in the in the Paris Agreement, there is no compliance, for example, in accordance to Article 15 related to the LED. There is no reporting requirements according to uh, Article 13. It is our NDC, which is our commitment uh, under the Paris Agreement. Um, and there is a, a strong um, call for parties to submit a long-term strategy, and that's very important, and we fully support that. But it's important that we do not derail uh, the embassies, which is where our formal commitment is embedded. Now, can we, uh, in light of that, still make room, because that's important, uh, to, to make room for the long-term strategy to inform uh, the embassies the so we can aim for high ambition? I think that's the, the question. That is the way it should be embedded in the global stock take, so it's actually anchored and linked to our indices, rather than being something separate uh, and, and very little um, a little data because there is no general. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a global stock take, so, so it's difficult to generate um, a, a, a aggregated um, a databases for for inputs of. of of, uh, of the, the lead. That does not mean that it's not possible to have a, a debate and have a conversation around how that are informing our our commitments. Um, but I think it's important to to note that the, that uh, that the, that the global stock tech is really about how to to enhance uh, um, to do pro to progress in our energies and to enhance our our climate ambition. That is anchored in the Paris Agreement in the NDCs uh, and not in the LED. Um, so, so just to make a little bit of a provocative um, point here. Thank you. Thank you, Kalkaberry. Did you have any thoughts on this question on the global global stock take and capacity building? Uh, 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 Perspective it uh, would go that <coughs> the most most important thing to um, have it, we we always uh, had a feeling that uh, the others needs to get understand the climate change topic and how to address the climate the end the targets and what should be done but I think the most important thing is the the and what uh, the work well the climate society needs to do to to deliver the messages correctly to the different stakeholders. It is not as important to, to all other stakeholders understand the climate change, but but the most important thing to
to get a hand and explain and show them first of all uh, what is uh, what kind of beneficiary things we can deliver to the uh, different different fields of uh, field work. So, uh, in different sectors, which is the most important for us. I'd like to turn to Adam just for his final thoughts and comments on this topic. Thanks. Um, I, yeah, I'll keep it simple. I mean, I think uh, the evidence that we produce uh, under the Maximizer project and the assessments that we made showed how challenging it can be to produce a very effective long term decarbonisation strategy um, taken for granted. Uh, if you think that EU member states are, are relatively very well developed compared to many uh, other countries, then I think the capacity building aspect is going to be crucial uh, and that the EU as a whole and individual EU member states can really uh, share learning, share their capacity with other countries to to help make everyone has an adequate and effective uh, decarbonisation strategy. Um, I think they're the, the building blocks to, to get to where we need to be in 2050. Uh, it's important that no no country is left behind simply because they haven't got the was it, experience of how to produce this. What is a challenging document to produce and deployment? Thank you very much, Adam. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our speakers for joining us today and for all of you in the audience for joining the webinar as well. And for those of you who have stayed around till the end, thank you very much. Um, I hope that you've learned a bit more about the development of 2050 strategies today. And uh, again, for joining us. Uh, just a few extra thoughts uh, on the webinar itself. So you'll all be receiving after this evaluation form. If you have a few moments to fill fill that out, it will really help us improve these going forward uh, in the future. Um, extracts from the meeting will be uploaded onto the Maxima website uh, in a few days' time. So please check the website to um, get a of this of this webinar. So that's www.maximizer.eu. You can also sign Sign up to the Maximizer newsletter if you'd like to continue to join uh, webinars such as this and other events in the future. And finally, I'd just like to thank the Maximizer team for organizing this webinar uh, and the team here for helping it all go smoothly. And thank you again to our speakers for joining us.